Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to address a little issue I'm having with my uh, Ruger Takedown 1022. Um, it came with an original uh, rail, scope rail here, which I mounted. I have a video on how I mounted that. Uh, but the issue is that when I put the scope on this, I can no longer see the iron sights. Okay? So basically, I put the scope on. I have a couple of issues with this this rail, but this is the the first uh, issue here. Okay, first issue being once mounted, I can no longer see, as you can see, you can't see the iron sights anymore. Okay, that's that's problem number one. Problem number two is the only where only place that this can mount correctly on this rail is at this position, which is far quite fire forward on the rifle I would like to have it further back for two reasons for eye relief number one and number two I'll show you the second reason by the way guns been safety checked and cleared so I don't want to hear about that here we go you see how much further from the end of the rifle that scope is sticking out okay well, part of that problem, the problem with that is that when you put it back into the case or the bag it comes into, if you wanted to put it away without taking out the scope, it sticks too far out the back. You can't seal the bag up. Okay? So, two reasons why I want to replace that rail. Number one being I want it further back on the rifle, not here, but here. And that will make the, the whole length of this half of the rifle, it's a takedown of course, uh, shorter and more likely to fit into that case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a see-through scope mount, okay, and I'll show you what that looks like. Looks like that, let me go closer to, to you here, and as you can see it raises it so you can see through to your iron sights right now so that's advantage number one advantage number two is as you can see multiple uh, slots for your uh, scope to land on I'll show you what I mean okay see the slots here well it's only one position on these on all these slots that that scope was going to fit correctly okay unfortunately I tried different ways of mounting the rings only one position okay but with this as you can see I can go back to the furthest back uh, on the rail and still lock down that scope okay most likely where I'm gonna put it is right there All right that'll buy me a little bit further back as you can see than what I can mount by putting it on my scope on my rail there which is where it normally sits so I'm gonna put these on um, I'm gonna put you a link to the NC, this is an NC star uh, see-through scope mount and I'll put a link to that on on the description and uh, let's just mount this up now normally I use um, I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, thread compound or uh, blue thread locker I don't use the red because I find it too hard to take off. Now I used the blue on this originally, so we'll see how hard that is to take off. Okay, so let's take these off. Standard screws. Now the uh, rail comes with a set right there and they look like they are Allen uh, screws. So. I think I'll use those on that as well. I'll tell you why here in a second. Yeah. See these screws? Bring it up to you. Have a flat mating surface, which meets up with the actual original rail that came with a gun, no problem. Um, but. these have a tapered uh, mating surface so I'm going to use 
these screws, let's see if you can see them, which have a tapered top on them as well. So, I think that's a better idea. Now these rails have a right way and a wrong way to go on, so just so you know. Um, if you put them in incorrectly, they'll uh, only two holes in the whole rail will actually match the surface. So let's see what we got here. Okay, so there we go on the top of that. And as, I, as you can see, you know, you can get three that way, <laughs> which may be good enough for you. But personally, if you get it the right way, you get four. Now, the issue with that is that when you made up those four screws, you're going to have some overhang here. Okay? Um, whether that's an issue to you or not, that's another thing altogether. Uh, There's all four screws lined up, and as you can see here, there is a little bit of an overhang. Now, I, I, I may just chop that off, uh, sand that, uh, grind that down, as this is only a, a piece of uh, aluminum, so it's not a real big deal to, to uh, uh, you know, take your, your, your sander or your uh, grinder and just take, it, take the edge, the front of that off, okay? But, it's up to you. Um, next. I'm going to put a little bit of a thread locker. This is the blue, which I used originally. Uh, looked like it worked pretty well. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the threads. Before I put them in. Before I put the uh, screws in to hold down the rail. So here's my little screws. Put them right there for now. They don't really look all that long either, but we'll go with it for now. I'll keep the originals and see if I like these better or not. So. A little bit there. I like to put a little bit in the holes and then I like to put a little bit on the screws themselves. This came with a hex key so I'm going to use it. Not the greatest of fits but it'll do. I said put a little blue on it. Okay, so there's all four screws put in and loosely threaded. Um, I do that first. I like it because it'll align itself as you tighten it up, okay? So, so I'm going to start from this end. Use the original key. I still get slippage on that, on that, on those screws on the, with using the original key. So maybe get a better Allen key with a better fit. I'm basically just torque them down. It doesn't have to be super tight because I'm using thread locker, so I'm thinking that'll hold it just fine. Okay. So there it is, nice and snug. There's your side view. As you can see, it raises the, the uh, um, scope height, but it should allow me to do the all-important see-through to the sights, which I will show you after I get this all put together again. Now, primarily, let's see how we go how it stows away now that we have this 
on here correctly. Okay, so I need to get a good bite on it, which I'm currently not getting. <laughs> I thought I had a good bite on it uh, earlier on. So I'm going to have to adjust my scope rings here and uh, to make them fit on these on this rail correctly but at least I can do that and I'm going to adjust it so it fits on the very last uh, scope ring right there I mean uh, last notch on that rail then I'll show you the view through this through this the, the uh, see-through rail all right so I Here's the scope that I was using, or I am using. It's the UTG Leapers 3 by 3 9 by 32. Uh, it's a short uh, scope uh, built. Spe I don't know, built specifically for this gun, but built for shorter uh, scope rails as a, I have. I'll show you. I'll put a link to that. Um, all right. So I basically what I've done is I've changed the length of these two. Um, scope rings on the scope so that they'll fit perfectly on the last notch of this rail okay so what we have then is more or less a flush fit with the front of the takedown okay which is great so let's see how it fits in the bag now the scope and all Okay, fits snugger. Doesn't quite make it to the Velcro, but um, not worried about that because, as you can see, it still fits in inside the case. Just makes it, I'd have to say. So, perfect. Now, so now I can just let's take a look and see if we can close up the case. Yep, no problem at all. That won't be an issue. So, this is the alternative rail for this. Uh, let's put this this way here. Sorry, the alternative rail for this scope and this gun, as far as I'm concerned. Um, next, I'll show you what it looks like looking through the little slot in the center. Let's see if we can get that through there. It's going to be a bit of a trick to get the camera on that, but I'll show you what it looks like looking through this slot. Okay, it's really hard to get a sight picture on this uh, as focusing on the bridge and the tip is a hard thing to do. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, well, there's the bridge as you can see. Right there, and you can see right through. And there's the uh, front sight. So. Uh, basically you can see that right through this rail you can easily use your iron sights again which is a great feature let me back that up and there's the scope and there's your iron sights right there okay so this is why I really like this rail alright um, apologize for shakiness or slightly out of focus but it's a very hard thing to get into focus so that's out of focus now sorry there you go your eye and the camera don't focus the same way so let me uh, try and fix that up for you there we go so there you go there's your sight picture through that through that scope rail okay I'll put a link in the description where you can get this um, it's a very nice unit and it solves a very good problem uh, another problem it solves is right here this is now no longer anywhere near that front bridge site here the, the scope uh, lens is, is no longer interfering with that before it was very very close okay and as you can see here the cap is quite tight to let me get that back and to the rail but it's not actually touching it so we're t we're talking a fully um, solved issue here and I, I like the fact that I now have a better sight picture on this 
as well on on the uh, scope uh, vantage right here so my eye relief is better as well here's one last overhead view of what it looks like with the, the uh, raised rail looks pretty cool um, zoom in a little bit on it. This is the 22 LR takedown Ruger and uh, as you can see pretty sharp and solves a couple problems. First I can see the iron sights through the whole, through the center slot and now my scope is further back gives me better eye relief also it now fits back into my little Ruger bug out bag. Thank you for watching.